As most of the European Union fights to rein in debt and ballooning budget deficits, one country still trying to join the club is enjoying a surplus. In fact, Turkey's books are looking their best in almost two years with a $3.7 billion budget surplus in May. Well, that's largely thanks to economic expansion. The country is now the second fastest growing economy in the G20 behind China with first quarter GDP rising almost 12% on last year. And though unemployment remains high at around 14.5%, that's almost 2% lower than it was a year before. But can Turkey's robust recovery continue at this pace? Well, to answer that, we're joined by the country's finance minister, Mehmet Şimşek. Thank you for coming in. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Now, we were just going through the Chinese figures. They just revised downwards the whole of 2009 GDP. Does that mean that the world is becoming slower, that growth will be harder, and that will have an impact on your finances as well? Global recovery is certainly has been underway, but it's fragile. So I think uh, the question is about sustainability, durability of relatively strong recovery from the worst recession in 60 years. So yes, it's, it's a big question mark, and most likely uh, global growth will moderate going into the second half of 2010. Uh, Minister Shimshek, what actually concerns you the most? Because you say it's fragile, the U.S. is saying they're headwinds because of the European economy. The Europeans are saying, well, actually China's not spending enough. Where do you see the most weakness? Well, the crisis has left big scars, and European debt, you know, sovereign debt crisis is one of them. But I think looking beyond that, you probably would appreciate that much of recovery was on the back of near zero uh, interest rates, which is still largely intact in industrialized world, uh, even though there has been some hikes uh, in, every, you know, in certain pockets of the world. But also, you will notice that fiscal stimulus is now no longer as strong as it was. So Should the, it be stronger? That's what the U.S. is saying. Well, it, it really would differ from one country to another. Yes, the U.S. would argue for that. But if you have a significant confidence problem on the back of implosion in debt-to-GDP ratios or fiscal deficits, so it really depends whether you have fiscal space, whether you can afford it. If you can afford it, yes, continue to support. If you can't, I think it's time to do a bit of fiscal consolidation. Mr. Shin, there's so much concern also that actually the austerity measures will be uh, too big, but there's also limbo about regulation. Are we regulating? Are we regulating well? Are policymakers doing enough? Does all these questions actually make you much more uncertain about growth for Turkey? Well, we, we're concerned. We're not an island. So we're highly interconnected. I mean, there are strong linkages between Turkey and, and, and EU. For example, EU accounts for about 60% of tourist arrivals in Turkey. It accounts for almost 60% of all foreign direct investments. It accounts for almost 50% of our exports. So how could you ignore what's happening in, in Eurozone or in Europe in general? So quite clearly, it does worry us. but. We're optimistic in the sense that core European countries are still in good shape, like Germany. Um, it looks like UK is doing okay. It looks like you know France has stressed. So, very, very countries on the periphery account for only five percent of Turkish exports. So we could leave with some damage there. I mean, not that it's desirable. Meaning, what is happening will have a limited impact. But the core countries really matter for us. How do we need to address the global imbalances? Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of European finance ministers have been uh, will tell me, maybe not publicly, that Germany just needs to spend more. They need to you know, develop their consumption. The U.S. is asking the same thing of China. How would you resolve this? Well, I, I just got back from G20 summit in Toronto, and much of the debate was centered on, the, well, well, this was one of the main issues. What I'm saying is here, of course, Germany could help, but also you know, China could help. Emerging markets in general, which now on aggregate have current account surpluses, could also help. And it's probably helping as well. So it's not, but I think uh, it, it, would, it, would, it would help going forward if there's more flexibility in exchange rate in China. If, if, uh, you know, if it's not only about what Germany does, it's also the rest, rest of Europe doing some structural reforms. 
trying to enhance the flexibility of the economy from labor market flexibility to many other issues. Has the debt crisis deterred you in any way of, of joining the EU? At the moment, you're in control of your, you know, your policy making, your interest rates, so if anything were to go wrong, it'd be much easier to adapt. If you were in the Eurozone, it'd be much more difficult. It's true. Um, in some ways, Eurozone could be seen as a straitjacket, <laughs> a tight one. But uh, no, that's not how we look at it. Uh, for us, the journey to European Union, the accession to EU, is more about Turkey's own political, economic, and social transformation. You know, Europe really is unity in diversity. So Europe is about values like democracy, fundamental rights and freedoms, rule of law, etc. And if Turkey was to establish all these credentials, then Turkey would be offering emerging market growth at developed market risk, and Turkey would be even more attractive. So we look at it on a more broader terms. For us, Europe represents a different uh, dream. Now, you had a spectacular GDP growth just this week. What is going to be the next hurdle? When is it going to stabilize? What kind of provisions do you have for next year? We've actually had very strong quarter-on-quarter -quarter recovery from second quarter of last year. In the second quarter of last year, annualized quarter-on-quarter -quarter GDP growth was 29 percent. Staggering. <laughs> uh, so on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, actually growth has slowed dramatically. But because you have to stabilize it. Exactly. Again, 29 percent is of just course. not sustainable. But that was like second quarter of last year. <laughs> what I'm saying is that on a year-on-year -year basis, because we had a low base, you know, weak base last year, we've had now a very strong recovery. Of course, 12, almost 12 percent real GDP growth is a dream that cannot be sustained. But what will happen, most likely, it will slow, it will moderate. But the year-on-year -year growth this year will remain very strong. Minister Shimshek, great to have you on.